let's get random. All right. By which I mean, let's learn a little bit more about randomness and how exactly we can achieve that in Java. Um, I know we talked about this in class, but I don't think there's actually a video that goes over randomness in any sort of detail. So if you recall, there is the math module. And in the math module, there is a method called random. And this is going to be the backbone of all of the randomness that we're going to do in this class, well, for the most part, and all the randomness that you're going to need to do on the AP Computer Science exam. So what this does is gives you some value. Well, actually, instead of me just telling you what it does, how about we, we look at what it does? So for int x, x starting at 0, and we're going to go up until x is, I don't know, uh, 15. So we get 15 values. We're going to print out math.random. Just printing things out to the console is great. And it'll save this. Let's compile it. Let's do it. So you see this? We got a bunch of doubles, a bunch of floating point numbers. And every single one of them is greater than zero, but is less than one. So that's what we know about this randomness method. Math dot, oops, math dot random returns values between zero and one. And you could get zero, but you'll never get one. It's not inclusive. So you're going to get these floating point numbers between 0 and 1. So that's all well and good, but hold on. How does that actually help us? Why is that the backbone of randomness for us? Because most of the time when you want to do something random, you want to maybe pick a random number between 1 and 10 or 1 and 100 or something. And we can only get between 0 and 1 and there are all these floating point things. Maybe I could flip a coin or something with this, but how can I get a random number, like a random whole number? That's a good question. So let's, let's take a moment, let's look at that, and let's think about it. So you've got numbers between 0 and 1, but not quite all the way up to 1. So this thing returns a number every single time. So, like you can with all other numbers, you can add to it, you can subtract from it, you can multiply it with something, you can divide it by something, you can do all those same sorts of operations. So, what might happen if we multiplied it by 5? Just for fun. Hmm. So, it looks like that actually changed what we're getting. So, this value, whatever we want to call that, is no longer between 0 and 1. Now it looks like it's between 0 and maybe 5 being the upper bound. That's interesting. So it looks like whatever number we put here becomes our new upper bound. What if I put 10 there? What do you think happens? Ooh, okay, so from 0, got all the way up to 7. So let's run it again. Let's maybe get more numbers, too. We'll double our sample size, because statistics is better with more numbers. Oh, here we are. Looks like we got a 9, but we don't ever quite go to 10. So, yeah, maybe between 0 and 10 is what this does for us. But with all of these sort of... Uh, decimal points still attached. That's not quite what we want. But let's do one more example just to try to prove to ourselves that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah. So I'm convinced. It looks like whatever we multiply this math.random by is the, the upper bound. It's going to go from 0 up to this thing but not including it. Cool. So it's sort of like if we had a window. So the original window 
was something small, like this. So it's like our number line. So from 0 to 1. But what we did when we multiplied it, is we stretched the window on this side all the way over to here. But wait, how did we do that? Why did it work that way? How did that happen? Well, let's think about it. So you got all those numbers between 0 and 1 initially. And we know that if this happened to be 0, anything times 0 is 0. So we know that the bottom of the window is going to stay the same. It's not going to move because it can't. 0 times 0, or 0 times anything is still 0. What about something else? What about like point 0.1? What would happen with point 0.1? So in our case, point 0.1 times 25 is 2.5. So already we went from something between 0 and 1, and it was pulled into something between 2 and 3. What about point 0.9? So that's on the opposite end. And it's been pulled all the way to 22.5. 0.99. Wow, up to 24.75. So we're really close to the cusp of 25. Can we ever reach 25? What if we add a bunch of nines? Well, that does look like 25, but I bet you, I'd be willing to guess there's a rounding error in there. Because remember, we talked about the double class. And there are logic errors that occur. Yeah, I think what happened was it eventually bottomed out and it rounded up. So we're never going to quite get to 25. And pure mathematics would tell you that, uh, regardless of what this interpreter is going to do for us. So, okay, I'm sold. This is going to give us something between 0 and 24.9999999999999 forever. So, how do we get integers out of it? What if I just wanted the numbers between 0 and 25? How would I get that? What if we did this? So, I'm going to pull this out so that we can see it better now. Okay, there we go. So what if we turn it into an integer? And if you remember, when you turn something into an integer, let's look at this, you have the number 2.5. And if you turn it into an integer, you just get 2. What about 2.2? You just get 2. What about 2.9? So when you cast something, that's what this is called, casting, from a double, or a float, or whatever, to an int, you're not rounding. It's not going to round it up, it's not going to round it down. What you're doing, essentially, is taking the floor of it, or you're truncating it. Whatever is after this decimal point, the computer says, forget it, I don't care, this thing is an integer now, chop off the extra, I'm not doing any extra work. So that's what's happening. You're just saying, forget the decimal component, I don't care, I don't want it, get it out of here, don't bother me with it again. So that's what this is going to do. So let's run it now. And I forgot my semicolon. There we go. So now we're getting integers. And it looks like all the integers are between 0 and... What's the biggest one we got here? 22. Let's run it again and see if we can get a bigger number. We want to see if we can get 25, don't we? We've got some 24s. Another 24. Lots of 24s. But we didn't get any 25s. And I'll tell you, we're never going to get a 25. Because, remember, the biggest number that we could get with just this alone was 24.9999999 repeating. And what does this say? Chop off the extra. I don't want it. So the biggest number you could get here is 24. 
So this number can be thought of as two different things, whichever you prefer. This is the upper bound to this sort of thing, where it's 0 up to, but not including. So it's up to 25, but not including 25. If you want to remember it that way, that's perfectly fine. Go for it. But you can also remember it as, how many numbers do I want? Well, if you count 0, we actually want 26 numbers. We want the span of 26 numbers. And we can count. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's 26 numbers total. A little bit counterintuitive, but when you add 0, you're adding one more number. So let's compile that, save it, and let's run it. Let's see if we get a 25. And there it is. We got a 25. First shot. First try. Awesome. So that's the basics of math.random. So if you want to get any sort of number between 0 and another number, it's actually really easy to do. It's just math.random times one more than whatever that top number you want is, and turn it into an int. Easy peasy. But, hold on, what if, what if I don't want to start at 0? What if I want to start at 1? What if I want the numbers between 1 and 10? Well, now what am I going to do? Well, let's take a moment, and let's look at that. So we got the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say this is from the range 0 to 4, but you want between 1 and 5. 4, 5. So how might you go from something like this? this to something like this. Is there some sort of formula to go from one of these, we'll say this is x, to y? How can we do that? Take a moment and look at that. See if you can find a pattern. Okay. Did you see anything? Anything pop out at you? Well, what about this? So, what if we, we add 1? 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. It looks like the equation here is y equals x plus 1. So why don't we, we do that? We're going to shift it. So our original window started at 0. So if we had our number line. It started at 0 and went to 4. So like right there. What we want to do is shift it so that it starts at 1 and ends at 5. So it's just as easy as literally adding 1 to it. And let's see, we went between 1 and 10. So we got 10, 1. Nice. Looks like it worked. So, what if you wanted something like between 25 and 75? Well, we know that the lower bound is always 0. So wherever we want to start, the, the lower bound we actually desire, it's just going to be plus that number. We've got to shift it up. So plus 25. So 25 is now the lowest value we can get. And we want to go up to 75, which means there's a total of 50 values. So let's see how that worked. And I increased the sample size so that we can see more numbers. And let's see, did we get a 75? I don't think we did. So let's run it one more time. So it looks like it's working. But I think we'd actually want to go up to... Uh, oh, we're only going up to 50. I don't know, we're going up to 75, sorry. 
I think we might actually want to go up to uh, 76. For the same reasons described before. So cool. So that's how the randomness works. And we could double check that and we could count it out. So 25 is now the lowest. Actually, yeah, 50 is probably fine. Oops, not 5. Well, yeah, let's do 5. So the numbers between 25 and 30 is what we should expect here. And we never got a 30, so I guess, yeah, actually, we want one more. There's a 30. So 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and the sixth number is 30. So however many numbers you want in your collection, in your set, and where you want to start. So if you want to start at a negative number, we want to go from negative 5 to 5. You just use a minus instead of a plus, and we want, let's see, I guess that's 11 numbers. Negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 11 numbers. We compile it, we run it, and look at that. It even works for negatives. Pretty sweet. So that is randomness in Java in a nutshell. So you can get any range of numbers that you want, and you can get them from this really small little range. Because that's all that it takes. So that's it for this video. Hopefully this uh, further cemented your understanding of math.random. And if not, feel free to ask me any questions and we'll keep working with this. Sometimes it just takes time to understand stuff. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.